this the zone is launching in 200 plus countries let's see here the zone du, 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 du. So, um, sports streaming service The Zone or The Zine, The Zone, how you pronounce that? The Zone is expanding into more than 200 countries and pursuing US, NFL, and NHL streaming rights. Obviously, they got the whole uh, Canelo Alvarez there. I wonder if he's the main, he's, is he the main influencer, the main sort of like guy that they use, right? I'm always seeing the promotions for it, so I'm assuming that's the case. Um, so, this is the following here The Zone, a streaming service competing with ESPN Plus to build a Netflix of sports, has announced aggressive international expansion plans ahead of the Canelo Alvarez next fight on May the 2nd. But, oh, it's coming very soon, isn't it? As part of an 11 fight deal with the stratosophical popular Mexican boxer, Mexican boxer, sorry. The company says it will launch in more than 200 countries around the world. The Zone presents the, oh, the, the, it presents the Zone. It's currently available in the US and eight other countries, including Japan and Canada, with uh, different content offerings in each. The current US service is heavy on boxing and MMA, but elsewhere it has much more broader lineup. In Japan, for example, the zone now of live stream rights for NFL, Major League Baseball, and the Premier League, and domestic baseball, basketball, and soccer leagues, all under twenty dollars a month. Fucking hell. That's why I think how are the, how is Sky Sports gonna compete with stuff like this? Like I remember when I was in school, for the most part, like um begging begging my parents to get sky sports and it was never an option because it was always you know a gazillion pounds a month and this was back when everyone the only way you could actually watch kind of you know alternative content on your t television was through sky it was for a satellite dish right we didn't really have the internet streaming platforms weren't really where it was now at the moment obviously you could watch, still watch legal you know tv you could still go on those legal streaming sites but the access to like hulu and hbo and netflix wasn't what it was or the services weren't what they were weren't, weren't what um, one where they are now at the moment so Sky Sports was the only way of Sky in general the only way to kind of get those things obviously Virgin came around obviously Cable was around too but they were always you know uh, they were always way way overpriced on what they offered because on paper it would be cool when you got the leaflet through from Sky about oh here's your package you can get Sky movies this Sky this da, da, da. but when you actually sat down and went through the channels and saw the content that was available it was pretty piss poor so and obviously they're charging a lot um, some some of the times, if you do, if you are ordering a package from Sky, I remember back in the day there was a thing where if you ordered the Sky dish, you'd have to kind of get the internet or you have to get the phone line that kind of came hard coded or you know um, padlocked uh, with it, so there's no kind of breaking out of that. And of course, once the internet platforms or the streaming platforms came out, although you have to kind of you know if you do on all the platforms, you're still paying more than you're paying for Sky. Imagine if you tried to go for Disney Plus, HBO Go, um, Netflix, Hulu. You'd be paying quite a lot a month, right? If you had all those services, like plus Spotify, plus iTunes. But at least you have the option to cancel them whenever you want. And you have the option to choose which one you, is more applicable to stuff that you're into, right? And like Amazon Prime Video, for instance, that I use all the time, which is great value for money because it's included in your Amazon Prime price of like, what, seven ninety nine a month, which is, you know, ridiculous value for money. So... I don't know how much longer Sky can survive charging people like 62 quid a month when, for the most part, if the match isn't on Sky, most people, if you, especially if you're a football fan, you probably just go to a pub and watch it or illegally stream it on, on your laptop. And if it's not, and if it's on BT Sports, you can just watch it on your phone. Like I have the app, or I have got the the you I've got the app, or I've got a login on the website. You can just stream it in full HD on your laptop. And then on the other side, you've got Amazon Prime who have the ability to now uh, stream some Premier League matches. And they also have the added benefit where you can turn off the commentary, which is great. So you just have the stadium effects playing and not have the commentary there, which, you know, if you're a fan of football, you know how annoyingly biased some of the commentary is that you're watching and it kind of puts you off watching the game. So that would be such a great way to kind of do things. So I, again, I'm, I'm really intrigued to see how much longer Sky can survive using that kind of... Um, using that kind of model of business especially with the zone uh pushing stuff so aggressively and i also wonder how long how much long the zone can afford to kind of give away that kind of package for only 20 dollars a month that's that seems like it's incredibly low for what they're offering but you know fair play to them anyway now to continues here it says the forthcoming expansion uh, will initially be focused on boxing beginning this spring most of the world will have access to the zone and its unmatched schedule of boxing events, CEO John Skipper says in a statement, our rooster of championship fighters represent some of the most world's most popular athletes and will be working with them to stage spectacular international events for years to come. Skipper, who ran ESPN, oh, this is good, good, I didn't know that, 
You've had ESPN until 2017 sees the zone international growth as a way to amass rights and subscribers around the world before making a major splash at home. Our competition so far has been to mostly be where they want, where they ain't, ESPN, he tells CNBC, but it is our intention over time to compete aggressively everywhere. In particular, Skipper is is targeting NFL and NHL stream rights in the US. Fucking hell, because ESPN have got an actual stranglehold on it. If you look at all their sites, content like you know espn and the nfl have essentially in bed of each other for a very long time so for the zone to get in there and kind of wrangle their way into that little phrase that was going to be a little bit of a hard uh, battle to do but again money talks in it bullshit walks so i'm sure if they're able to put in a better offer offer better terms and it's just going to be very interesting or if maybe just split the um the rights in it just in half and give half and half to each competitor and see who does a better job and then the consumers have to decide but yeah, let me just see what they do with the Premier League going forward. Again, I'm liking what Amazon Prime are doing with their Premier League footage. Um, I want to see more of that. And just want to see what BT Sports do too as a competing guy. Because again, I think for the for us, for viewers, for customers, it's all benefits. We're getting free different companies competing for the right to show us sports. And then you got Sky Sports who are just there languishing, you know, trying to, you know, drum up fake controversy with their transfer deadline, their bullshit that they have on. You know what I mean? So if... You know, if those guys are able to kind of pick up the slack and which they've kind of done pretty well, I think for the most part, to fair play to Sky Sports, they are. You can see they're making more of an effort to kind of get involved with the fan channels and bringing in some of the personalities on YouTube who amass mad numbers so they can kind of bring their viewership to Sky, which is quite a good idea. But for the most part, I'm not sure how well that works because I know for sure when I see clips of somebody that I like, let's say Rants and Bants or someone for talking on Sky Sports News. I'm most likely looking at some mad, you know, um, recorded from a TV Twitter video clip than I am going to the official Sky Sports News um, channel to go hear him talk about it. So maybe they're missing a beat there. But again, at least they're trying to um, get in touch and kind of connect with the kind of millennial football generation um, more so than other places I've done in the past. So let's see what the kind of transpires in the next few months or years happening with all this sports stuff because I think it's going to get very, very um, interesting very, very quickly. Let's say that for lack of a better term.